What's up, guys? This is just Ashley Keaton. Uh, we're about to get into this. Muslims versus ex-Muslims. Are women and men equal? This is crazy. <clears throat> Definitely had to see this video. What you are bringing up is not relevant. It has everything to do They're with They're not it. on the same page. Let's, 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 let's let people talk for like a little bit. I want to talk, I get interrupted. So, no, we're not going to do that. You're interrupting yes, everyone yes, too. Let's have no questions. First, first, first of all, this, is this dude is, first of all, this dude is covering his face. Like, he ain't trying to be seen, bro. It's wild. 114th episode of Middle Ground, and we want you to help us decide what the next 114 episodes will be. Join our Middle Ground Patreon community and make Middle Ground with us. The other side is brainwashed. Can the agreeers please step forward? I think brainwash is a strong word, but I, I also obviously step forward. I was raised Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm Iranian. My mom's side of the family, especially a lot of Iranians, they felt like they just had to become Muslim to obviously like adhere. And it's extreme what they're doing in Iran. Obviously, I'm not comparing. But I guess with brainwash, I also went to an Islamic school. So my really devout Muslim friends, it feels like brainwash. I have a friend who's hijabi, and I, I just like, it, for her, it feels like it wasn't a choice kind of vibe. It's just something you should do because of your family and because of the religion. But then she's also super devout Muslim. It's just a hairy topic. Can the disagreeers please step forward? Yeah, I mean, I would agree in the fact that brainwash is a very strong word, just like you said, um, yet you still step forward. Um, I'm not familiar with anyone on this set, so for me to call someone that I don't know brainwashed, I would feel that it's pretty disrespectful, especially not knowing where they came from, what their beliefs are, why their lifestyle is the way that it is. Um, so I don't really see how that kind of goes together. I just think any kind of uh, philosophy that doesn't encourage you to ask questions, to challenge it, to you know seek further truth, I, I think that should automatically kind of be a, a little bit of a red flag uh, to kind of say this is the one truth and everybody else might be uh, getting maybe closer or further from the truth. Um, so while I like see where you're coming from, I don't agree that people are brainwashed because I do not want to disrespect your experience. I th you know, keep in mind, I'm a Christian, so. You know, I, I don't know too much about the Muslim religion, for sure. Um, I've heard some things, but I haven't really, like, dug into it myself. So just the fact that this video exists, like, is very interesting and intriguing to me. Definitely want to know what these people got to say. But, yeah, that's all I had to say. Just so you know, like, I'm a Christian. So interesting. Yep. It may seem a certain way, but it might not be the truth for everybody. And I also want to touch up on, like, you talked about how um, you can't question something. I think for me, for years, I like really struggled with my faith. Like I, I don't remember being a child and like praying because I have to pray, but praying because like I felt like there were repercussions that I would have to face if I didn't pray. And it wasn't until I got to leave my house and go to college and like experience Islam on my own that I had a good association with it. But I also believe that Islam is one of the religions that does encourage like questioning. Like it says, if you have doubts, I will have answers. I, I just wanted to make a note. I this is my maybe it's my personal experience. Growing up Muslim and I went to an Islamic academy. I was hijabi after fourth grade years, you have to be. Um, and I had religion class every day. And I will just say, I feel like every question I had is met with because the Quran says so. That's it. Like I date someone who's not, it has no background in Islam or didn't grow up that way. You're gonna get met with because the Quran says so, because Allah deems it so, and it, that is why. The reason that I disagree that the other side is brainwashed is because I think for the other side to be brainwashed, there would have to be one specific truth, one version of Islam that no one can question and everyone accepts as the truth. I think that one truth doesn't exist and that different people believe in different versions of Islam. So because a lot of Muslims, including Muslim scholars, have been coming to different interpretations and if you were brainwashed, you would, be un you would not be able to come to that difference of opinion. You would simply follow what the, the scholars of the past said. Hi, I'm Jade and I'm a member of the Middle Ground Patreon and I was chosen to read the next prompt. Women and men are equal in the eyes of Allah. I think a lot of people misconstrue about Islam and when they say that women are mistreated in Islam, it just comes from the fact that men and women were created for different purposes. Now that doesn't mean that one holds more value than the other and that one is seen as better. As an atheist um, now, I, I still uh, hold that uh, Islam does come from a feminist place. Um, you see uh, women in positions of leadership. So uh, despite you know my being on this side, I, I still um, appreciate that Islam has uh, that perspective. I grew up overseas. I grew up in Bangladesh and growing up in a country that seemed like a lot of things are not fair for women. A lot of things are not fair for minorities. Um, and I think I struggled with that thought, like, okay, if men and women are equal in the eyes of Allah, then why does this exist? And what I realized as I grew older was that we're also living in a society. So I definitely have to face the repercussions of like other people and the social construct that we have, right? But, outside of it. Yeah. My question is, is it the same in America? Because obviously in America, men and women are going to be equal in this religion. But I'm questioning... Because I really want them to get into, like the lady did say one statement about the Quran. I want to know 
what does the Quran say about men and women? You know, and also how is how are the cultures in other nations? Because here it's going to be, from my understanding, a lot different than other countries. But I could be wrong. But that's that's how I've seen it at least. So um, I hope they get into that. I'm outside of it. So like our experiences are a product of like what we believe in, exactly. and but also like our position within the system. And I I won't put the fact that like society sees women as not equal onto God and onto my religion because that's not what religion is meant to be. And I'm not going to say that Islam does not believe that women and men are not equal. This was one of the biggest topics that caused go. me to really doubt my faith. Looking at the Quran, looking at the authentic hadith, and also just from historical records as well. Men are allowed to have sex with female slaves. In Surah Nisa, verse 24, it says, prohibited to men are married women except for what your right hand possesses. And your right hand possessions refers to female slaves. And we see multiple hadith of instances where the men have just defeated the tribe, they have female war captives, and Muhammad allowed them to have sex with them. And that's probably going to be rape because what woman would be consenting to sex in that situation? I think too, like just thinking about the Quran and my upbringing, like I had every day, the two biggest ones that come out, stand out to me, would be like the issue of the hijab, which I know a lot of people will counter that the Quran says women have to cover the khaymar to cover up so that they don't tempt um, the men. And then the, I will say the Quran does technically say men's hijab is their gaze, the male gaze. And I just, that just seems a little silly to me beyond that, like in the Quran, how men can have up to four wives, but women can't. It's what? What does this say? My bad, I'm in the way, guys, sorry. Uh, it says, if you fear that, okay, Quran, Surah, and he said three, I don't know what that means, sorry, I'm not like an avid Quran reader, I have a Quran, but, um, so, if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphans, marry women of your choice, two or three or four, but if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly, then only one, or that your right hands possess that will be more suitable to prevent you from doing injustice. I'm ready to see what they about to say, honestly. I, or I, in the Islamic school, I want to say the, the azan, the call to prayer. All the boys in my class are like, we're going to do the call to prayer for, for this Friday. Um, I'm ineligible because I'm a woman, apparently. Can't do the azan. I can't do the call to prayer. So just those, are, I would say, are my Quran-specific examples. And they're like, well, this is to protect. They're probably going to say, well, it's not that you're not equals, that you just do different things. But then you'd have to bring up, like, what men should not do. Uh, or, like, in Christianity, women are not, like, are not encouraged to do certain things because men, you know, we're meant to provide, we're meant to protect. So it's like certain women don't need to do certain things because it's the man's position to do that, but also the man has to give his life for the woman. So that's kind of the trade-off, I guess, if you will. So I wonder if they're going to say probably the same thing. I don't see that at all. Yeah, so there's a lot of different points that you brought up. The first one being the hijab, which the woman is obligated to wear. And you talked about how the men have to lower their gaze, which is 100% right. The women also have to lower their gaze, and the men actually have their own hijab. So the men have their own parts of their body that needs to be covered as well. So obviously, men and women were created um, both physically different, psychologically, all different types of, they're different in every single way. There's different parts of the body that need to be covered because men are attracted to different things, women are attracted to different things, and it's to protect both sides. The second thing that you brought up, I believe you mentioned the, you not being able to make the call to prayer. Um, once again, that's in order to protect the women just because men can also be attracted to the voice of a woman. So that's the reason that that's not allowed. And I completely understand that you being a young child, that's something that you wanted to do. And I mean, pre-puberty, um, in your household, when, with, your, with your family, that's something that you should feel free to practice. Make the call to prayer. Do that in front of your father, your brothers, your uncles. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be in front of the whole entire mosque. So there may be things that you felt because you were a woman you were being limited to, but there's a benefit behind it. So it's about looking into that. I think this is bringing... Guys, uh, please, if you're here and you're enjoying it so far, like the video and also subscribe if you're feeling it. Um, we have... Something, I gotta stop saying um. Someone says, hey, you should pause more. So I'm trying to do that. We have a store. We're trying to build a church. This is our goal. We have a lot. We have a lot of new merch, and we have hats. We have bags. We have hoodies. We have shirts. We have just Ashley Keaton merch. We have uh, merch from my church. Merch from the church. You feel me? And we have a saved hat. And if you get the saved hat, you will become saved. No, I'm just playing. Uh, but it will help you get close to being saved. But anyways. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Let's get back. Important, important point of contention here with all the things that you're saying and you keep bringing up that men and women are fundamentally different. Where is that coming from? Where is what that? coming from? 
when you say those things. When I say what? Men and women are fundamentally different in these very specific ways. Men are attracted to a woman's voice. <laughs> okay, so scientifically, uh, men and women are different. So if you were just I look at someone, man, and I look at a woman, I'm pretty sure I would see some differences, um, as well as just scientifically, biologically, emotionally, psychologically. There's been studies because everyone started to question you being able to change your sex and be able to change your gender, but you were created as a certain sex for a reason. And each I would so that's my point of contention here. I, there's nothing. There's nothing for me there. When you say that I was created for a specific purpose and a woman was created for a specific purpose, I would disagree completely. Why can't I fulfill those other purposes? When you start slowly building upon these layers, these layers of like roles. That, that prescriptive. prescriptive roles, that starts to create a system of oppression. Yeah, well, That's how it's built. Well, can Beautiful. I say for personally myself, um, I, I would say that his view of it is also an interpretation as much as there's merit to it. Covering my hair and my face for me was so that people see my personality and my intellect before they see my beauty okay. or they see the things that they're attracted to. Yeah. Also in my culture, I'm ethnically black, obviously. Um, well, maybe not obviously. But, um, <laughs> our hair is very different from other races and we go to great lengths to assimilate. And that was something that I personally struggled with before converting. So for me, yeah, um, it just, it helped me gain confidence. I would be worried about like, am I, how does my face look? Is there something on my face? Or some of your communication is also in your facial expression. So when you can't see some of it, you have to kind of, you know, use your imagination a little bit. I like that mysteriousness. I like that, especially other men don't have that access because I'm, I have a fiance. I like that there's only one person who can see these parts of me. Um, and that's what makes it special in a way. So the roles for men and women, it's not entirely just because I want you to do it because I said so. It's probably because it's to your benefit. If you look yeah, for I'll it. talk to your point that Allah actually says it. Yo, that is interesting. It's crazy, but it's interesting. The fact that she goes so far. And, and you know what? You have to open up this discussion with some understanding. Um, I'm definitely about like, sorry, understanding people. Um, I know people are like, nah, what's to understand? She's covering up her whole face. It's crazy, right? Get it. But I think it is some uh, value in her... I'll say it like this. Yes, you know, Christians and all like will say it's overboard. A lot of people say what we do is overboard. I would just say if she's got a good reason, I would never try to step in the way of her personal conviction. I do think, um, you know, obviously I'm on the what would Jesus do train, but I at least respect her character, right? I at least respect that, you know, so give credit where credit, where credit is due. Uh, yeah, I, I respect it. I'm not really like, I, I wouldn't want my wife to cover her face in that way, but I respect what she's doing. You know, I just think that the woman's face was not made just for her man, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden pretty sure they didn't cover up their faces they covered up parts of their body because they were embarrassed now which parts of those body which parts of those bodies that's debatable but in modesty i think we can go way too far in modesty but she feels comfortable doing that i'm not gonna stop her i'm not gonna be a stumbling block and stand in the way of her personal convictions you know as long as she got those from god that's the most important thing which you know who knows but yeah that's all i was gonna say about that Show some people respect when they want to go the extra mile. And uh, like uh, Fidin, like there's no compulsion in religion. So when you say that, why can't I do X, Y, Z? Like why can't I do the other role, for example, right? These are things that because Allah expects you to, these are the things best for you, but it's not that you can't do these things. But when you say it's best for me, mm -hmm. there's a threat. The, the problem yeah. is there's always going to be an existential threat. I'm saying it's best for you because it's what's best for society. So everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in place for us, that we believe God, the reason that we have these specific, if you want to say roles, because men compliment women in a certain way and women compliment men in a certain way. But what way. I'm saying is he's not. When let you me, say let, that me, let me explain myself, right? Let me give you a very easy way to understand that. I'll use her point, right? So you mentioned that, for example, why can you not marry four husbands and why can I marry four wives, right? These things have less to do with equality or worthiness in the eyes of Allah and just individual sex differences. For example, if I have four wives, right, I can impregnate all of them and we'll all know who the father is and who the mother is. If you, for example, in this scenario, you have four husbands, we won't actually know who the father is. And also, why, just, why is that why? important? Why would that happen? And why how does that well, make men and women equal in the eyes of Allah? Like that's, that's what that's telling so you. So I'm saying we're equal, but we're different. There's think, no knowing of the and father. And that's just there. reducing women to the sole purpose of, of reproduction. And Yo, this man a player. I'm saying we're equal, but we're different. You see, he did the, he did the chin thing. We're equal, but we're different, yo. But he coming with some, coming with some points. I, what? That's crazy. That men, you know, you can impregnate someone every day, and women, you know, we kind of have to stay pregnant for a while. And yo, he's like, he is not. He's not liking this. He's like, what? 
you're agreeing with this? Like, he's he's wondering, why is this woman agreeing with this misogyny? Like, there would be, like, a mix-up with paternity issues. Like, genetics, like, genetics, like, like, if it was just one one man impregnating <clears throat> a bunch of women, you could have a society still. I understand so, what you're saying, but these are such narrow, like, what about isms? These are such yeah. narrow circumstances. Let me, let me ask you a question. No, but yeah. I I wanna, I'm sorry, in. I want to hear from Atia and Janet as well. Yeah. I think, um, also, here's just a food for thought, and I, already, I can guess the answer. Why don't y'all wear a hijab? Like, why, why, why can't men wear a hijab? They are. So I'm currently in hijab, right? But I mean so, on your head. You have heads, women have heads. So you're, gotcha. you're basically calling the hijab a headscarf. That's, That's not what a hijab is. is. Yeah, I, so. Okay, I mean, so, And once again, we already said that the hijab for men and women is different because we're both created physically different. So obviously the hijab for both of them is going to be different. That statement is not really And then once again, you're implying that the hijab is oppressive to women. So that's what you're implying when you're saying that why can't men do it because are you, do you believe that the hijab is oppressive to women? Uh, but uh, in the deepest depths of my soul, yes, I understand okay. it can so be a choice. I you, do believe it's by you agreeing that, or by you saying that the hijab is oppressive to women, is actually disrespectful to our women in the religion because you're either implying that these women can't think for themselves and that they're just wearing this hijab because they're that's they not what that I mean at all. Like, no, I think or you're saying that we're all forcing every single woman in the religion to wear this and we're throwing this on their head. No, I'm saying that's what you're saying. By saying that the women are being oppressed in the religion. The problem is, I get what you're saying. You can say it's disrespectful, but you're still dodging the question, bro. You're still dodging the question as to why. You know, like in, um, see, when we read the Bible, Corinthians chapter 14, where first Corinthians chapter 14, where it tells a woman that her hair is her veil, um, or, you know, some people don't agree. I would say, you know, a, a woman's head, if she has long hair, it is the same as like her hair is given to her as a covering, right? Her long hair is the difference between men and women. So there has to be a different look, a different separation. But this is the problem when you add an actual fabric. Now you have to say, why would a woman need a fabric and a man not need a fabric? Surely you don't need a, a piece of fabric that is separate from a woman. Doesn't cause any separation. If that's the case, then everyone who says a woman needs to wear a fabric needs to also say that a woman should never wear pants and only wear skirts and dresses because there has to be a separation in outfit, which, yes, I definitely would say that, you know, men shouldn't go around with dresses, so there needs to be some type of separation. So, you know, you clearly need to think about that. But also, with the fabric, you know, she's, she's really just asking you a question. And, uh, yeah, clearly... That's more of a gaslighting type statement, and he probably doesn't even know. But he's, I mean, maybe he has a point. Maybe he's covering all bases, but to assume that she's being disrespectful when she clearly just asked a question. And yes, it is possible they do have, you know, belief systems in place. Like even in Christianity, they have certain groups of people, and like I covered it on one of these videos, this dude had his congregation eating grass and acting like animals. He had his congregation uh, on the ground, and there there was this church that had a whole altar people just bent over, and he was whooping them with a belt. He went he went to all of these women. They bent over, and he was smacking their behinds, bro. I mean, sorry, I got to get, you know, a little crazy with it, but I'm just saying, like, that's not impossible. It happens. Women get taken advantage of, and also men, I would say, get taken advantage of and get pulled into these, how do you think all of these, uh, th these, you know, you have slave owners and they program their children and their children's children to think that this stuff is normal and they don't know that it's some oppressive route, which it's, it's a valid question. At the least, it's a, just a valid question is all I'm saying. So you shouldn't dodge it by saying it's disrespectful because all those things could be possible. You can convince a group of people to do something. That's because they have to wear the hijab? That's not black that's, and white. I'm in here and ask. So these yeah, justifications black and white that you're like saying that. for hijab, do these justifications really still have solid ground when we consider that the hijab was for only one class of women, free women? Slave women didn't wear hijab. And be Yo, he coming with. That's why he wearing the mask, because he know he about to say some stuff. They probably so mad. I mean, I don't know. They probably so mad at this dude, Kafir. Yo, he got to be careful after this meeting. Because <laughs> he really pressing it.
men were allowed to have sex with, uh, with slave women, they were being sexualized and objectified when Muslim men were considering whether they're going to purchase them. Yeah, let me answer that. So to address your slavery point, I'll get on that in a sec, all right? But the point that you're asking, if we were really equal, how could that be? And you were asking if we all had hijab, why do you have to cover your head with a khimar and I don't, right? A very simple example is if I expect a man and a woman to lift a heavy load, but the same load, that would be unequal, right? So we have to look at it, is it equality or equity? So what is equal in the eyes of Allah for a man is not going to be the same treatment for a woman. And I'm sure we understand that if there are differences in our sex, then there See, it's like he's just saying that men and women are different. He's like, for example, this is different in men and women. We get what you're saying, but they're specifically asking for the reasoning behind the hijab. They're just asking for that specific reasoning. Like, yeah, you can explain, oh, equal this, equal that. They're equal, but they're different. Like, we get that. We're trying to, like, because women give birth. Men give seed. We get it. Uh, men don't have PMS. So... There, there are differences, but what he's specifically getting to, if the hijab forms, if it has no purpose, he's talking about the purpose, why a man doesn't have to do it. Talk about the purpose behind it so that we can move on from this point, because it just sounds like a lot of dodging to me, honestly. It's a clear question that the guy's asking just explain what is the point of the hijab why does a woman have to wear it and not a man and it's a reasonable question but you're just explaining differences between men and women and you're not really getting specific on the hijab difference in expectations and roles. maybe historically but we live in a time where a lot of what you're saying just isn't relevant so you're well, not, not going to be found in a situation thank you um i would love to wrap this up and i would love it if the women would wrap it up i will say i feel like it's very rooted in when it comes to covering up, for example, it's to protect you. And if you are dressed immodestly, they might react a certain way, they're attracted to your voice. I just have to say, I'm a lesbian and I am not tempted by, like, in my mind, I don't see a woman walking down the street immodestly and it's not. She's like, I cannot believe that you just said that. I don't know. I don't know what she's thinking, but that's just how she looks. It was just funny. Put it in equality, like the prompt said, Allah sees both women and women is equal, and I don't hear that, honestly, at all. When you're saying, things you're saying, saying, saying thank you. Yeah, I, I would love to, to I'm yeah. sorry, we, we're going to keep going. Yeah. All of this is going to build on each other. I would really love to hear from Atia. Okay, thank you so much, guys. There are a couple points I want to touch up on. I really, like, appreciate the uncomfortable things that you brought up in this conversation, and I loved how, like, a lot of you guys didn't respond. I couldn't respond myself. Um, and then, like, she brought up a point, and then everyone kind of jumped onto that, because that is something you guys could respond to. Um, and I think, like, there are uncomfortable things that, like, especially us as women, like, have questioned. Um, oh, she's not wearing one. A lot of times don't get answered. And then I also want to say, like, you brought up a point, or we were talking about, like, oh, you were, that she's, what she said was, like, disrespect, disrespectful to Muslim women. Do you not have to wear it then? That's not true, because women around the world have different experiences. There are women who are being forced to wear the hijab. You can't Absolutely. disregard somebody's life experience and be like, no, you don't live in that social area. You could live like this. When you're part of a system that you true. don't have that same level of, like, openness to, it's hard to be, like, it, it's hard to see that, you know? I'll cut this out. It is impossible to live a 100% pure Islamic life in modern society. Join our Grand Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. Wait a minute, it has I have lost to relationships be. because of my current religious beliefs. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, they can't play that part. Wait, what? I'm so confused, bro. Same level of like openness to, it's hard to be like, it, it's hard to see that, you know? <laughs> It is impossible to live a 100% pure Islam. Patreon exclusive. What is... Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I wonder if there's a reason they cut this out. It is impossible to live a 100% pure Islamic life in modern society. I mean, nobody's perfect, so how could you... I don't know. Life in modern society. Join our Middle Ground Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. I have lost relationships because of my current religious beliefs. They really gonna do us like that. I have lost relationships because of my current religious beliefs. Uh, really? <clears throat> the relationships that I've lost would be relationships that I probably should have been in in the first place. Once I became more strong in my faith, I had to cut those people off. So those are the only relationships that I've lost. Yes, it hurt maybe at the time, but I look at it from the outside perspective. That was a decision that I had to make. A relationship that I've lost is in a different sense than losing contact with them, but I, the relationship I lost with them is that I'm unable to be my true self around them. And that relationship is with my mother, and it's the reason why I'm in this ridiculous outfit today, because if my mother ever found out that her only child is gonna go to hell forever because he left Islam, it's gonna hurt her so badly. I saw myself how much it hurt my mom when I was talking openly about my
Dang, yo. I know some people are going to be like, who cares? He's in the wrong religion, da da da. But it's just say, yo, these people are very convinced that this is truth. They're very convinced of that. So, like I say, man, just have some understanding because that's sad, bro. That's that's sad to to be in a process of thinking that if your children do not do this, they're going to hell forever. Like, yo, I got sympathy for them because cause it's hard, bro. It's hard. I mean, I just say that because... I can't be, man, I don't know. People don't know how to reach people, I guess. They think it's all about, um, well, who cares because you believed a lie or something like that. Like, come on, man. It's not, I I just strongly feel like some of these people that are so gung-ho and so, uh, so arrogant and so mean to people that are in a different religion, some people that are Muslim, if they grew up Muslim, they will be mean and arrogant against Christians because they have that personality and they probably wouldn't even be able to find Christianity because they would be so arrogant. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. But yeah, that's, that's sad though. I just, I feel that. I was in Islam in high school. It was causing her like literal depression. The reason I continue to pretend and I like, I don't really have the bravery to come out and be my true self around her is because she's the best mom I could have ever asked for. She did. She worked so hard to raise me. She sacrificed so much to give me a really happy childhood. He just don't and believe the it. The idea that I will be showing her that all her hard work was for nothing because her child is going to burn in hell forever. I can't hurt her like that again, like I hurt her in the past. She doesn't deserve to be hurt. She deserved to be happy. I would say I haven't lost any relationships as far as like dating and I am no contact with my family but it's actually not because of the difference in religion, it's because of a plethora of other things. Um, I would say I went to that Islamic academy growing up and ironically, it was the best years of my life. I had the best friends. When I went to a secular school, I'm from a conservative area, so I was the only Iranian, so they were bullying me for being hairy. And then when I went to the Islamic Academy, I didn't have that problem anymore. It wasn't until when I went to high school and I'm like distancing myself from Islam that a lot of people from our local community um, just kind of, like there's whispers of, oh, Janet's family is hypocrites. She's a whore because I don't dress modestly, as modestly as they'd like me to, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've lost a lot of, I would say, my Muslim friends from the school. Thank you for sharing, guys. I also wanna say, I think I have a very similar experience with you. I would say that there were quite a few years of my life when I was really, really questioning my faith, but also like the way I grew up and what was like, I would say forced upon me. Um, and it was really hard because I felt like not myself. Because of how conservative my family was, I, as I grew older, we just started becoming like separated because of their viewpoints. And as like, as they grew older, they became more and more religious. And to a point where I felt like sometimes like if I'm trying to like share my feelings, something like that's really difficult. And I've gone through like very difficult situations in my life. Um, I've been met with like so many religious things. I felt like misunderstood by my siblings a lot when like, when I was questioning my religion, I felt like I had to keep that secret. And it wasn't until end of my high school career where like I was sitting with my best friend who is very Muslim and one of the best people I've ever met. And I shared, she was like the first person I shared and it took so much courage to share that. And then she said, you're not horrible for questioning your religion, you're just human. And I think that changed my life. And I think that's what I would say to anyone that's like watching this video. I would say that to anybody who's like questioning, like you're just human, that does not make you bad. And like, especially if you're Muslim and you're like afraid of like what Allah thinks of you, Allah does not think of you badly. So I just think I'm in a, in a pretty privileged position. My dad's half Jewish, um, but baptized Catholic. My stepmom was raised Southern Baptist. I have Mormon cousins. I have Quaker uh, family. I've, I've just had to, all my life, learn how to agree to disagree with, with certain things. Uh, Yo, he did all this and he became an atheist. So, he he just got exposed to too much, I guess, because this man don't believe in nothing no more. He's like, yeah, I've heard too much. This, this can't all be true. I, I give up. <laughs> and um, and just be sensitive um, across beliefs. But that isn't to say I, I don't feel like I've lost some connection, for sure, with my really devout Muslim family. Um, I, I haven't told them that I'm queer. Um, my mother came out, she was married to a woman for, for, for a while, so, um, you know, they at least know that. But um, at least, you know, with the conservative part of my family, um, they've proven that they're not a safe space, and that's that. Um, I've lost some relationships because of me reverting. It's more so because people couldn't relate to me anymore, because I used to be very different. I used to be that girl who would, like, go to raves with my friends. My favorite rapper is Stunner Girl. Like, I, I'm from Sacramento. Like, I wasn't raised girl. Muslim, so all the friends that I had growing up and stuff, when I started to become a little bit more conservative or a little bit more intentional with the things that I wanted out of life, they were kind of like, why don't you want to go with me to like, you know, clubbing or do this? And I'm like, because I want to have a family. Like, I want to make sure that I'm the type of person that I would choose if I was a man. And I realized that um, when I became an adult. And so because of that, people, we just went our separate ways.
Islamic views on homosexuality are outdated. Why would any of the Muslims step forward and be like, our views are outdated? You know Jubilee trying to start an argument. <laughs> you know good and well. <laughs> they said, um, ooh, homosexuality, let's throw that in there. That should be spicy. Yeah. So I grew up in a pretty queer family. My South Asian family is very uh, Muslim and my mother and her sisters grew up in that environment. Um, and all three of them turned out to be queer. I'm queer, my sister's queer. It was a long journey of self accept Yo, what does, I'm confused. What does queer mean? Does that encompass homosexuality? I thought, I, I it's like you got not you got the term non-binary, you got the term um gender fluid, like and then queer. It's like don't, isn't queer like the only word you need? I don't know. I'm just trying to get clarification on how that stuff works, because it's just it's, it's too much. <laughs> And this is just who we are and who we've always been. When I, when I look at my grandfather, he and I have strikingly similar stories. He admits that in his village, it was normal for men before they were married to play around with each other, to have boyfriends, um, uh, to experiment. But then after you were an adult, after you kind of, after you married, of course, that, that was off the table. But I, I kind of see, you know, almost 70 years apart, me and him both have the same stories. Early 20s, got to experiment with my sexuality, you know, now in a long-term relationship with a girl and, and very secure in that. But uh, his experience was filled with shame that, that he then passed on to his daughters. So uh, I just, I, I see that and I feel bad for generations of, of queer people who have been uh, told that they can't be um, or that maybe they can be, but they can't Oops. act upon it because that is haram in some way. Um, so queerness is in our blood, it's in our nature, it's across species, it's across time, it's across history. And uh, religion through Islam, through Christianity um, and through various other means um, have been used as, as tools to erase that queer history. I agree, all Abraham, all religion in general, organized religion, I feel like it's not, you're gonna find it in Christianity and Judaism. Um, I, I myself, I'm a lesbian. I didn't come out until I was older, like an adult. But a lot of that was rooted because I have such a devout Muslim family. It's like, it's if I come out, like my mind's going many places. It's not just gonna be like a normal American family coming out. Like I have very abrasive Muslim dad. I don't really see my gayness coinciding with um, Yo, if religion. You don't stop like shaking religion. that leg like I think that, that Islam has no moral standing to say that two consenting queer adults can't be in love while allowing a man to have sexual relationships with his slave. I couldn't rationalize how that is okay but too gay or lesbian yo, or whatever adults. Yo, this dude, Kafir, is coming for some smoke. He coming for the smoke. Look at they faces right now. They looking like, bruh, did you really just come at us? Like, we, got, we gonna tear you up for saying that joke. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. In a loving relationship, they're fully consensual. There's no power dynamic. Is that's bad? Yo, first of all, my question is: If it's okay for two consenting, for example, males who have love for each other to conduct sexual intercourse, then what is the problem with? Um, two brothers who have love for each other and they're consenting to have sex that's with each other. That's not the same. How's that's not the same? incest and you're comparing incest and homosexuality. Right. That's, that's you're... Please. Whoa, 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 whoa. Run it back. What did he just say? Ugh, I hope he makes sense of this because I'm, I'm interested to see what he talking about now, bro. There's no power dynamic. It's, that's bad. My question is, if it's okay for two consenting, for example, males who have love for each other to conduct sexual intercourse, then what is the problem with um, two brothers who have love for each other and they're consenting to have sex that's with each other? That's not the same. How's that's not the incest same? and, you're comparing incest and homosexuality. That's, 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 you're, Please explain that's the difference. disrespectful. I'm not gonna lie, that's really offensive. Either way, that's offensive. Either way, that's offensive. Either way, that's very offensive. Explain, it's, explain the difference. It's very relevant. I could, I could. One, one is incest, morality. one is, I've done a 23 and me, me and my girlfriend are not related at all. So okay. one is, what is the difference? What is the difference? Let's make it clear. Can I say something? Can I say something? That's as wrong as a brother and a sister consenting and having sex. Exactly. I agree. What's the problem with that? What do you mean? Okay, because they both come from the same point. There's two people who consent to having sex together. Yeah, same exactly. Yeah. So what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. They love methods of socialization. What is, the what is the problem with them? If they both consenting and they both have love for each other, just like 
two males who don't know Hold each on, other, have love for each other. What is the problem? problem I just want to say, you just did this thing in public speaking called minimizing an issue, and then you're trying to find this correlation that like simply doesn't exist. addressing the principle, which is coming from objective morality. So I'm trying to figure out. What I'm trying to figure out if this is wrong. Oh, he coming for the smoke, bro. Yes, I get what he's saying. Um, let me listen a little more though before I say. Homosexuality anything. is okay. Then what makes incest not okay? Let me tell you. Let me, let me say. What you are bringing up is not relevant. It is How not. It has nothing to do with. It has nothing to do with two men who are not related. It has everything to do. They're with not on the same page. Let's let people talk for like. No, we're not going to interrupt. So no, we're not going to do that. Let's all stop. So it's really offensive for you to make these arguments when you are constantly interrupting. Every time I speak, I'm getting interrupted. I let y'all speak every single time, and then yes, let's have no. I just want this question answered. Like simply put, what's wrong with two brothers? Can I answer the question? Yeah, please. Okay, so. I feel like it's very obvious that incest is wrong because one, if you have a child with this person, there might be something wrong with it. Not to mention that if somebody has known you since you were born, the influence that they'll have over your life is different than if you made the choice to act. The reason that they can't answer the question and the reason they don't even get the problem with what they're saying is, uh, which the other dude in the mask brought up a good question. They kind of dodged this question again because he asked them, um, if you can be with multiple slaves or wives or whatever you, you said, then what is wrong with two consenting queer adults to be together? Um, obviously, I don't agree with any of that. I'm just stating the point. The whole polygamy thing. Um, but yeah, when he asked this question... He's asking them from objective morality. They can't answer that. They can't say what is right, what is wrong. What point he's trying to get at is we can't decide what's right and what's wrong by ourselves. There has to be a God to do that. So you could say, oh, well, it's way different. Pedophilia is way different, way worse than homosexuality. But without a God, you won't be able to explain that. The point he's trying to get at is without Allah... You won't be able to explain the, the the morality problem. You won't be able to explain that. See, that's why Christians and Muslims, I can't tell a Muslim that you can't know, you can't you can't explain morality because you have the wrong God. The fact that there is a God in there, I, I say God, like I know Allah means God. I'm just talking about the difference, the difference in traits. I don't believe that we serve the same God because of that, but that's not really that important. But because they serve a different God, they we can't say, oh, therefore you can't um, explain morality because philosophically they have a God in place. So morality can be objective because you have a God to believe in. You know, if there were multiple guys that had a meeting and decided what morality was, at least you have something. Like, just for morality, that's all you need. Something to, some outside of, uh, outside of natural thing, element. Some element outside of nature, nature to explain that. But they can't really be the people to explain what's right and what's wrong anyways because they don't have that belief system in place. So... They're just going to have to not say anything about it, really. Be with them. Exactly. That's why it's wrong. Here's the thing about homosexuality, because you would think that I'm homophobic because, you know, like, I guess everybody assumes I'm, like, extra pious and whatever right, because right, I cover right. my face, right? Actually, one of my parents um, is a member of the LGBT community. I grew up with some cousins that were. I had friends that were all throughout elementary school and high school and stuff. I never saw... Um, morally something wrong with it. I think that the reason that it was put into Quran is simply about sustainability. You can't sustain life on earth if people, like the majority of the population are homosexual. I don't think it was to say that anybody's better than anybody else. We all have the capacity for love. We all just want to love and be loved. My question is the idea that there's two consenting individuals that want to have sexual intercourse, regardless of their backgrounds, what is wrong with that? Because we don't, we're not saying that that's the only determiner here. We're saying between two men who have not grown up together, who are not brother, or brother and brother. So it's two different things. They are two different okay, things. Okay, so let's say there's two estranged brothers that never grew up together. My well, honest answer is- Can we pause? I would like to hear, uh, Jad, you can make a final statement. I'd like to hear from Atia. Um, and can we keep it about homosexuality? So let's close up incest. You want to bring up the point about how incest results in, there's obviously things that come harm that can come from that. There's also harm that has been proven to come from 
homosexual intercourse and a man having intercourse with another man. Um, all the STDs, STDs yeah, of course, 100%. Are rampant in heterosexual STDs, 100%. Relationships. But there's, it's been scientifically proven that STDs are more yeah. in homosexual yeah. relationships. Heterosexual people get STDs too. So your argument of homosexual people get more STDs. Homosexual people are getting it higher. Creating there's new STDs that are resulting from this type of intercourse that's happening, and it's found a lot more. Give me an example. Yeah, perfect. So a very recent scientifically proven one was monkeypox. That the overwhelming literature came from gay people. That was literally you're saying you're projecting a stereotype. It literally became a stereotype against gay men. How is scientific literature a stereotype? It was. You're, what, what are you sor uh, so the peer sourcing here? Because you have clearly believed all of the Google articles about how it was only attributed to the gay community. That's my opinion. That's it. Monkeypox was ridiculous. Um. I, I really wish that this conversation was like a bit more about like the impact, the fact that it's sinful in Islam, and like the effect that it has on like youth. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. I think that like I firsthand know the experience and the hardship people go through when they grow up in a community when they have never even heard of homosexuality. And then the first time they hear about it is discussed. The way our societies are structured, we hate on the fact that they even exist. We don't want our children to be that. We don't want people in our communities to be around that. We don't want to allow people who are homosexual in our mosques. So I'm getting really emotional about this because there are just so many people I've seen, there's so many people who have lost their lives because they just could not exist. And so to minimize somebody's life and to like hate on them for this one part of their life that is so, that's supposed to be so private is not okay and it's not Islamic. Um, personally, I didn't step in here to say that it's outdated because I don't want to make a statement about my faith that I wasn't, this is something that I always struggled with, but I'm not going to say it's outdated because I just don't know why it is the way it is and I choose not to question it because I'm a Muslim. But at the same time, I do have like a lot of pain associated with that, that truth uh, because I've seen how that impacts people's lives. Um, and I think that like at the end of the day, like, I wish we lived in a world where we saw the fact that like, as human beings, we have free will. Therefore, just how I have the free will to practice my religion and like, not entertain a homosexual relationship the same way anybody else has the ability to not be religious, to practice homosexuality and to coexist respectfully. And that's something that sometimes Muslims can't offer and that is my problem. Um, and I wish we offered that so that we wouldn't lose people's lives the way that we do. We wouldn't push people away. We wouldn't traumatize them and generations to come. And I 100% agree with that. The fact that um, it's very important that we understand regardless of what Islamic points and my points obviously coming from Islam are on homosexuality, that that means that in no way whatsoever am I gonna blatantly disrespect you for the way that you're living your life. Just because I deep down inside reject, not even deep down, I <laughs> just get inside, <laughs> I reject your lifestyle, um, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna come out here and start blatantly disrespecting you and saying anything about the way that you're living your life. If that's the way that you're gonna live your life, that's the way that you're gonna live your life and at the end of the day, we believe that it's gonna be God that's gonna be the one judging you and it's not up to me. Muslims are unfairly targeted by outsiders. Muslims are unfairly targeted by outsiders. Middle ground community results, 88% yes. I agree. So I have to say this is interesting. <laughs> right, I just have to think for a really long time. No, yeah, fair Honestly, just being from the Middle East in general, you're going to get targeted. I went to a conservative, secular school, and I was the only Iranian kid there, and they automatically just assume I'm Muslim because I'm Iranian. They have such like disdain for it. I've had um, in-laws from several people I dated, um, like as soon as they start dating me, send things about ISIS and the Taliban, like articles. And for, which is ridiculous because even as an ex-Muslim, I know that's not Islam. I'm pretty- I just can't state a whole blanket statement. It's like, yes, from what I've read in the Quran, there are some things in there that you just gotta read. I'll just say that. Uh, that dude in the red shirt and the to talk about it though this dude in a red shirt and he, he about to let it be known so i don't even have to say anything but i would just say i do think that it's a lot of people are a lot of people are targeted um they don't really know what this quran what the hadith is actually teaching and they're just you know regular cool people who don't really know as much about the religion. But when you find out about Surahs, where they say you can lie about the religion that you're in, um, you know, it's just just certain things like that. I, I'll let them speak on it because I'm not going to speak too much on it. Because of it, even as an ex-Muslim, like, I, if I hear anything disparaging, I'll jump on it because I just feel like people are really Islamophobic. I agree, yeah. Islamophobia is real. I experienced it myself as a kid. And... I know the topic was about outsiders, but I have actually noticed this issue with other ex-Muslims. Like some ex-Muslims, when they leave their faith, they become really Islamophobic and they become really dead set on this yeah. idea that Islam is, you're supposed to go in and attack disbelievers. You're supposed to do jihad like ISIS and Al-Qaeda does. I mean, they contribute to how the outsiders would unfairly think that a lot of Muslims are uh, just terrorists that like they want to do jihad. But the truth is the most, the average Muslim today in America is a peaceful uh, person. Um, I just have one point to add. I really agree with this, that like, especially in the United States, yes, we're definitely targeted. Um, even if you look like slightly Muslim, you're targeted. Even like 
being Muslim from a different sect of the world, a different part of the world, like gets you targeted. Um, a lot of times, my dad, because I'm, we are South Asian, when we go out to like the Middle East, like anywhere in the Middle East, they attack him because they think that he's South Asian, um, even though he's like Muslim and they can see it. And my mom's wearing a hijab, but I really agree with that. But at the same time, I also believe that there's another part of the truth that like there are places where there's violence occurring and Muslims are like also part of that problem. Um, so in that case, they're also the people who are hurting others and also being hurt. And it's like a sort of cycle of violence. <laughs> I also like the point that you brought up. I think extremism is a problem no matter which sector, whether that's like an extremist Muslim or an extremist from any religion. So I think that problem exists on both aisles. Um, I think he also is pretty valid. I mean, it's not that I don't think Muslims get like unfairly targeted. I think just everyone gets targeted nowadays. So, <laughs> so it's just like, yes, after 9-11, I think right after that, it definitely got a little bit tough for a lot of Muslims. I think it was like severe targeting at that time. Um, I think now, I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. Um, still, every once in a while, you'll experience something like maybe me because my beard, like you'll get like a look or something or someone will just throw a comment. But it's nothing to the point where I'm like, I'm like hurt, like, oh my God, like, how could you say that? I just want to add, I think it's a little different for students, who, like kids who are in school. I tutor a lot of them. Um, I've had like, students who have told me like even like the past year like how they have had they, they were discriminated against um, and so I would say that like I think it still exists. Yeah, what I found for the most part is it, it, it definitely like even when I was in school like yeah I got made fun of or whatever people would do jokes that like terrorist jokes or whatever but once you I just like I was the type of person I wouldn't just sit down and like let someone make a joke about me. Someone made this exact joke in school and like about like a bomb blowing up or something because we were watching a documentary and so I in front of the whole class I addressed them I addressed the reason why did you make that joke I explained my point of view and, like, and then he got expelled. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I think if you just let them make these jokes about you and you just sit back and kind of take it then yeah the bully's just gonna keep on attacking that. You definitely handled that situation better than I did <laughs> as a kid because in elementary school someone called me in PE class he called me a terrorist I said if I was a terrorist you would be dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was I got a one day suspension while he got a lunch. Uh, uh, I think I think it's important to note like while I think there's definitely some validity in what you're saying for sure. Like That's it's funny. important to stand up for yourself, for your beliefs, for your religion. Um, I don't. I think we need to acknowledge that it's not always that easy. And there's definitely oh, circumstances where I think the opposite is true. I think there's just as much true that like somebody can go through their life and it will get worse for them because even so early on, we're talking about times like we, we were young children, and we were exposed to yeah. these horrible majority of things, and um, maybe those people have circumstances where when they go through life, it's just going to get worse. They're just going to they're going to have even more hatred. Gonna, there's going to be more reasons for them to come at it in a way that's dangerous. My <laughs> personal desires do not have a place in Islamic faith. Sorry, faith. I'm getting tired. My personal desires do not have what? For me, other than like the obvious, I'm part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. I horrible majority of things, and um, maybe those people have circumstances where when they go through life, it's just going to get worse. They're just going to they're going to have even more hatred. Gonna, there's going to be more reasons for them to come at it in a way that's dangerous. My personal desires do not have a place in Islamic faith. It's an interesting question. For me, other than like the obvious, I'm part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. I was raised Muslim and I felt like I didn't have decisions or choices growing up. And when it came to Islam, I remember I questioned things in my religion class. I remember like the Imam told me like women, when you go to Hajj, you can't wear um, like body spray, right? Or perfume. And I raised my hand during um, my religious class and I asked why. And mm -hmm. I always got met with, well, because the Quran says so. Like be quiet, Janet's a problematic kid asking me questions. Um, I just feel like there's no room really there even without the LGBT community part of me. Like what you want kind of, it felt like doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's no room. Can you not wear perfume for real? Is that a real thing? It's just, it is what it is and you need to obey it. At the end of the day, if you commit a sin and you don't seek repentance, you, Allah is gonna punish you for it, even if your personal desires conflict with that. Because of that looming threat, it does not matter what you want. If it goes against what Allah says, then you are risking having your bones crushed. Yo, can y'all just take it, take notice, bro? This dude's shirt it looks fire, bro. I want to get a shirt with that type of material. Whatever that material is, comment down below. I need that shirt. For real. I like that shirt. Are you are risking having your skin burned off of your face. It doesn't matter how illogical you think it is. If you believe in Islam and Allah says it's bad, you, you go against that, you cloth. are putting yourself in a huge risk of a lot of pain and suffering. Yeah, I think it's not that it doesn't have room for our desires, because it does. It just doesn't have room for our compulsions. And I heard this quote, someone said, my religion is perfect, but I'm not. You have to allow Islam to teach you that you've blurred the lines between your desires and your compulsions and the things that you actually need out of life. So it's really hard to be connected to God if you're connected to all these things that are calling you, pulling you different directions. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So does your standard for haram and halal vary at all? What would you base your standard off of? How were you taught those standards? Um, I learned them from Quran, Quran or from my upbringing, like if I don't know. So, oh yeah, yeah. so I think everything you're saying is valid and I think you can also believe all these things even just like outside of Islam. Like I think these principles have existed like throughout time, other religions, other philosophies. And so my question is like when it comes to the more sort of confusing, like I was raised, I'm not allowed to eat pork. Mm -hmm. okay, that's I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> nobody here. <laughs> Same. Right, and okay. so uh, I think at one point somebody told me that was because they're not safe to eat or like, you know, it's dirty. Point being, 
there are moments it, like you can you can definitely live your life that way. But my question is like, at what point do you question those those nuances? Those like those confusing yeah, well, points. First, first, I question why I'm questioning it. It's okay. like, why do I want to have a different answer than what's written here? First, I question that, okay. and then I'll do research and I'll say, okay, well, how were people living like before my time, before my parents, before my grandparents, and why didn't they choose to eat this animal? Well, maybe because it eats its own fecal matter or it eats its children. I mean, you know, its, its own fetus and stuff like right. that. Well, I understand what I'm saying is like, how do you deal with the the logic of it, yeah, because so, there's many ways to argue around it. Yeah. Is it okay if I interject here? Thank you. So essentially, yeah, there's a lot of things that you may not understand why something is, essentially what you're saying is, if something is not allowed and you don't understand why it's not allowed, how do you kind of go about being okay with this thing not being allowed. If God is telling us not to do something or to do something, even if we don't understand the wisdom behind it, it's the fact that we know that he's the most knowledgeable, so we trust in the fact that whatever he's telling us to do or not to do, that is the best thing for us. Blind Oh, I'm not even gonna say nothing. Look what this man just said. And loyalty. Yeah. So, um, in terms of, yeah, this, because we believe wait, that wait, he's the most knowledgible, so I do question, obviously, this something I don't said. In terms of, yeah, this, because we believe that he's the most knowledgeable, so I do question, obviously, if something. Yeah. So, um, in terms of, yeah, this, because we believe that Sorry, he's the most knowledgeable. To find a spot. I understand what I'm saying is, like, how do you deal with the the logic of it, because yeah, so, there's many ways to argue around it. Yeah. Inter- is it okay if I interject here? Thank you. So essentially, yeah, there's a lot of things that you may not understand why something is not. Essentially what you're saying is, if something is not allowed and you don't understand why it's not allowed, how do you kind of go about being okay with this thing not being allowed? If God is telling us not to do something or to do something, even if we don't understand the wisdom behind it, it's the fact that we know that he's the most knowledgeable, so we trust in the fact that whatever he's telling us to do or not to do, that is the best thing for us. Blind, blind loyalty. Yeah. So blind loyalty. So, um, in terms of, yeah, this, because we believe that He's the most knowledgeable, so I do question, obviously, if something, I don't understand something, I'll ask someone with more knowledge, and if they can't give me an answer as to why something is the way that it is, then we believe that Allah Taala and his prophet know what's best, and at that point, I believe put my faith in God, that's what faith is. I, 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 that's not faith, that's not f- Sorry, for offending people, it's not faith to believe in something. To not question things is the scariest place to be, period. Whenever someone says something like that to me, the whole argument just starts crumbling down. Okay, well, even people in my own religion, they'll say, no, I don't want to touch that area where I got a question. Well, then you just don't know. Because if you don't touch that area and question it, you will never be 100% sure. It's just, it's a scary place to just believe things and not to question it. I, it's It's because then... You could be wrong. Like, this man told you this. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Allah came down here and told you himself, that's totally different. You know, but not to question a man that spoke something that Allah said is dangerous. And now you're making that man God. You're making him God because you believe his words more than Allah. That's why I can't get down with stuff like that. There's there's just a, a, a small hiccup in both of your like scientific. See, he 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 has had so many issues just explaining this because I know people don't want to hear what he' about to say right now. They're gonna try to do whatever they can to tune this man out because he' about to say exactly what I just said. Method here, which is that why am I questioning? And then then there's your part. If I don't get the right answer or an answer that makes sense to me, I keep asking, I keep asking, I keep asking. But if you don't get it, then there's this kind of cognitive dissonance that now needs to exist. I think I think, I think like a good way to put it is like part of existing as a human being is questioning everything. That's how we developed everything. That's how we grow and adapt. I want to add something really quick. I know that like there's been a lot of questions with what he said, especially just saying like that's blind faith. I think that there is like, I see your point, but there's a lot of merit. And like, I agree that like, Meaning of life is questioning things. However, if you keep questioning everything, you're going to have the most doubtful, horrible, untrusting life in the entire universe. The, like the goal is, of life is to be in peace, right? So I think that like we can only question some of the things. And I think personally, from my questioning, I have found the answers to which that has led me to trust the God that I believe in. And that is why I also believe in the other things that he, sub- he tells me to subscribe to because I believe that that is good for me. So it's not always that every Muslim or anybody who subscribes to religion is like blindly believing in everything. No, they have a trusting relationship with that form of God or that religion or that ideology, and therefore they choose to subscribe to other ideals. Yeah. I totally relate. I, I, there's a lot of insecurity here. Um, there's, there's a lot of doubt. Um, there's a lot of thinking. I just, I, I think it is a much more difficult and much more noble path to take, uh, you know, through the chaos, through the unknown, um, through the lack of, of prescription, through questioning, um, rather than just kind of taking the carrot and the stick of heaven and hell and, and saying that that's, you know, those are my answers and, and that brings me comfort. I, I think that there are paths to being a good human um, outside of religion. And I believe earnestly that those paths are much harder to take. My question to you would be like, where do you draw the line? We all draw the line where our morality is. Yeah, I feel like there's like a general right. sense of morality. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Right. so I'm saying if we were all left to just decide what is okay and what is not okay, do you guys not see that it would just be left to individual opinions? No, I think. See, that's true. That's why the atheist made some good points. But he's an atheist, so he can't hold it up. 
So that's why if, if it was a Christian saying that, they wouldn't be able to make that argument. But the fact that he said, oh, well, you know, being able to question things, having a life of questioning things is better than having a life of having blind faith. But the balance in the middle would be true, honest faith, asking those questions, being honest about the things you don't know. But then when God reveals something to you, then you know it. People said God said, then I don't know yet. But when God shows me, then I know. You see, so I don't know that God is real at this moment. Something deep inside of me may be a connection, but I don't know yet. I spend time with God. I put my hands and and be tangible with this spirit to see what happens. Um, if there if there is a spirit, or if I'm just making this stuff up, you have that experience. Boom! God confirms it for you. Now you know. You've you've listened to the questions that the atheist has brought. You've listened to the questions that people have in other religions. You ask God, Hey, show me. Is your name Jesus? Or is Jesus God? Like, can you show me that? Read, study, do the work. Faith without works is dead. Do the work. Find the answer that way. So there's a balance and there's a disconnect when someone says blind faith versus never coming to an answer, never having faith at all. It's true faith. Faith that comes from God's revelation. Revelation is what people are missing. They just decide. You don't have to take a chance. You don't have to put yourself in a box of religion. You say, I will ask questions. And if you don't know if God is real at this moment, that's not the worst place to be as long as you're searching. You see what I'm saying? Like, if if you don't know what religion to choose, that's not a bad place to be. You can, You should never put yourself in a box. Never. If you are a devout Muslim, if you're a devout Catholic, who cares what you call yourself? How do you act? What do you do? If I call myself a Jehovah's Witness, do you witness Jehovah? Are you doing this to your full capacity? Then seek God and, and question things. Hey, not, not, oh, should I leave this kingdom hall? Should I be believe in this one thing? Right and wrong. I'm just a really scientific person. I'm going right. to do my research. I have engineers for parents. So that gives me peace. Me it's, yeah, so it's my different kind of peace. I don't think people are just atheists or non-religious people are running rampant without a set of rules. I think just to be a good person, religion aside, there's just pretty standard things that you should just follow. I see your point of view and I think that that's why like, like what she said and what you said, like I understand both of you so equally because I feel like at parts of my life I struggled with feeling so much guilt. Like I felt like Islam put so much like guilt on me of like, she's oh, probably if I did something the most, I felt. She's probably the most balanced um, out of all these people anxious person but then once I actually started becoming closer to God I had a safer relationship with him or, or them um, and I believe that like no first like God is here for me like there are so many times in my life I felt so alone and like when I read the Quran like I really feel that now that like no matter who is hurting me like Allah is with me and I think that has been like something that has made me really strong so I think that like yes people have a moral compass but at the end of the day like as I know from my studies like it is dependent on culture and if there was no like guidance people would still create one that was a beautiful way to end thank you guys so much this was nice to meet you all nice all right, that was an interesting conversation. Guys, if you like the video, obviously, <laughs> like the video. You know what I'm saying? And subscribe if you're feeling it. Um, if you want me to see, if you want to see me react to more things like that, uh, obviously, put it in the comments. And this is just Ashley Keegan. Peace.